Hey, man. You mean me? Yeah, you. You want some good stuff, man? Um, I've got the best stuff you ever had. The best, Joe. Oh, yeah, then? The best. Yep. I just want, yeah. I just want the daffy. This stuff is tight, 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 tight. I believe you. Promise you. Yep. Here. Okay, then. Take it. Right, yep. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Ta. Okay, then. See ya. So, uh, this apparently is the good stuff. As you can see, it's a little bag of Daphnia eggs. I thought I'd give live Daphnia a try. And rather than buying a uh, live culture, I thought I'd try the eggs. They're a lot cheaper. I don't know how they're gonna go, but I thought I'd give myself the challenge and apparently I can restart the culture about five times with the eggs that are in this little druggy bag. I'm gonna give it a try and hopefully that bloke doesn't come back anytime soon. It's the good stuff. It cost me about 10 bucks to live it off eBay. Life culture's about 20 to 30 dollars. Yeah, just thought I'd give it a go. So let's see how we go with this one. And here's a close-up of the Daphnia eggs. They just look like dust really. And you can see how many there are in the bag. Obviously over time, the hatch rate of the eggs will diminish the longer you leave it, so they don't, won't last forever. Okay guys, here's a little baggie. I'm gonna try and get some of the eggs out of here without spilling them everywhere. Okay, that's more than enough. You can see I've got some air stones in here. I'm gonna take those air stones out because I want them to hatch before I start turning the air on. The air stones will just displace the eggs and they'll end up on the sides of the glass, basically. If you have really tiny bubbles, the air bubbles could get caught in the Daphnia. They won't be able to survive with air bubbles attached to their bodies. But apparently, people say that they have better success when they do aerate their tanks. Those air stones are about to come out. I probably should have taken them out before I put the eggs in. And we'll see how we go over the next few days with those eggs hatching. Some of the eggs have gone into the water but a lot are at the surface still. It is now been a week since I put the eggs in the water and there are heaps of Daphnia in here now. You can see the water's a little cloudy and that's because uh, I've been feeding the Daphnia a mixture of spirulina powder and yeast. So I add a bit of that every few days for these guys to filter out of the water. So guys, this is the spirulina and yeast mixture that I've been keeping in the fridge for these guys. I haven't stirred it yet and I just wanted to show you the color. This is tank water that I keep in the fridge with the spirulina and yeast. And now that the spirulina has settled to the bottom of the glass, you can see it's like a blue purpley color. Now when I mix this mixture up, the spirulina will get suspended in the water. It'll be a dark green. It really is crazy. I mean, look at the color. So there you go. Spirulina is now suspended in the water with the yeast and it's gone green again. There we go, nice and green. Let's go feed the Daphnia. This is pretty much as clear as the tank gets before I added more food. I'm just going to pour I added heaps of spirulina to this, probably more than I was meant to when I first made the mixture up and a, and a little bit of yeast. We'll see, I really want to enrich the Daphnia with the spirulina and use them as a transport method to get the spirulina into my fish. So on camera, this smokiness is looking redder than it actually really looks. And uh, yeah, that should do it for now. That will feed the Daphnia for a day or two and then I might add a little bit more in depending on how clear that water gets. So if you don't know, Daphnia are filter feeders. I haven't added a sponge filter in here because kind of defeat the purpose of being able to feed the Daphnia. Okay guys, I think the day's come for me to start harvesting from this Daphnia culture. Uh, you can see there are heaps in here now and yeah, the population is growing exponentially. So I think it's time to feed some of the fish from this Daphnia culture. Got a fine net here. Hopefully we'll let, the, let some babies through. Can't really see him on camera, but there you go. There we go. Pretty sure I've got most of them off the net. See the breakfast fry eating them up. 
So I'll just, they'll just continue to hop around in the water column. The great thing about culturing Daphnia indoors is that you know you're not going to get any parasites in your Daphnia culture. Parasites that will harm your Daphnia culture or parasites that could possibly harm your fish. So you know it's a good, clean, safe culture. And the good thing is, I suppose by doing this, I'm getting the fish to associate the net with feeding time. Look, they're not even really scared of it. Maybe this would be a good way to associate the fish with a net being something for feeding time as well. So I may as well feed some more. I mean, it is kind of addictive to feed your fish live food and watch them go crazy for some uh, good food. So I'll feed some more. You harvest your culture regularly uh, so you don't crash your Daphne culture. Having some taken out of here will help the culture grow in population again rather than it crashing. I'm going to try and not drudge up any of the bottom of the tank because the bottom of the tank has the Daphnia exoskeleton. So you don't want to drudge up the bottom of the tank. So you can see all the Daphnia I've caught there. Quite a lot in that net. You can see they've got kind of an orange colour. Okay guys, I've decided to feed into my Lamprologus oscillatus gold fry. Take a little time to get used to what these things are. But their instinct is to see something jumping around the water that's small like that, they're going to go for it. You can see them picking them off slowly, slowly. The great thing about feeding Daphnia to your fish is that they'll survive in the water for days as opposed to live brine shrimp which will survive maybe for a few hours max in fresh water. Okay, and this is how the tank looks after two harvests from this culture. Still a lot of Daphnia in here, so that's a good sign. It's giving me confidence to be able to feed more fish from the culture without completely draining it of Daphnia. So guys, I've decided to run this tank or this experiment with my Daphnia culture for as long as I can. And I'm gonna time how long it lasts before it crashes. So obviously gonna keep this tank going for as long as I can. However, when I notice that it's in decline and it's crashing, I'm gonna start a culture in this tank. I'll probably start a culture from bring over live Daphnia into this tank, start it up that way. Maybe I'll add some more eggs from my little baggie because it'll be a waste to let them uh, perish over time. And then I'll see how long it takes for this culture to start to crash and then I'll start this tank back up. So going back and forth, back and forth, I should be able to keep the Daphne culture going indefinitely. These lower tanks on this rack are the coldest tanks in the fish room. Obviously heat rises, but they are warm enough to culture Daphne. So I'm gonna use these two tanks just purely for Daphne culturing. I might upgrade in the future to a larger tank for Daphne. So there you have it guys, my little experiment on raising Daphne cultures from eggs. I said before, I've never done this before, so it was a little bit of an experiment for me. And I was a little bit apprehensive on raising Daphne from eggs, or even a live culture, because I've heard stories of people crashing their cultures and they just wasted their money on, on the cultures. But I think if you have that built-in redundancy, that backup, that if the culture does crash, you can make it survive and go on in another tank. What do you guys think? Uh, I'm sure there's a lot more uh, experienced guys out there on YouTube who have done this for years um, and have tips and tricks of their own for raising Daphne cultures. And if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. I'll really appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Hey man, what you looking at man? I told you that stuff was the best man, but you didn't believe me, eh? You know why? You're a cockroach man. A cockroach. Why you here? Do my boy a favor. Click like, comment and subscribe, alright? Really help him out. Okay man, I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> what you looking at man? I told you this stuff was the best man. And you didn't believe me, huh? You know what you are man? You're a... <laughs>